what is up you guys and welcome to the first video of kind of this creating content series in regards to me just sitting in my car um, I don't know if I'm gonna do this for every video or not but I just thought it would be kind of you know something chill something you know nothing too crazy where you know I just share some insights some things that I've learned in regards to what it means to pray and fast you guys, as you saw maybe in the title of the video, that's what this video is about. And I want to encourage you guys just the importance of it in the life of a believer and what that means, honestly. Um, you guys, prayer and fasting go hand in hand with one another. And I got my phone here. I got some notes that I want to share with you guys. I got some just things that I've learned. You know, I'm not like an expert. I'm not perfect by any means nothing like that. I'm just a sinner saved by grace who's trying to, you know, continue to walk the daily Christian life, the life that means surrendering to the Lord daily, crucifying my flesh daily, picking up my cross daily, and so forth. And you guys, prayer and fasting is something that I've kind of been learning about for a little over like a year or so now. Um, I've heard about it in the past, but I never really like implemented it. I've heard the importance of it, how significant it can be in the life of a believer, especially, and what it means, honestly, and the benefits that come from it. So, um, I've again, I've heard of it for like a little over a year now. Um, I actually did my first fast. I did a water fast for three days, so which basically means simply that you know, all I did was drink water for three days and I didn't eat any food. And yeah, so that was that. I did that a little, about a year ago, about a year ago, around the time when I first found out about fasting. But then I kept learning more as time has gone on. And um, just again, the significance as I've grown deeper and deeper in my faith and stronger, uh, I believe just with my relationship with the Lord and um, just understanding things more clearly, stepping away from more and more things of the world and beginning to, you know, seek the things above. Um, and yeah, so I don't know, it's become more of a real thing to me and a thing that I just felt the Lord, the Holy Spirit impressing upon me to, you know, actually do and to, you know, take it seriously. So Anyway, I actually just recently now, so I told you I did a three-day fast about a year ago, and then I actually just ended a five-day water fast um, literally two days ago. So I wanted to wait till I finished that to create this video to share with you guys to kind of give you some inside things I've learned, some value, um, and uh, some things I've gained and that I believe could be beneficial for you. I want to encourage you to do it. A lot of people are fasting nowadays for, you know, actual physical reasons. But you guys, we should be as Christians, as followers of believer, followers and believers, born again believers and followers, excuse me, of Jesus Christ. We should uh, implement this more so in our daily lives. I'm telling you, you're going to see so many great things happen in your life. You're going to see shifts, changes, and just breakthroughs in your life. I'm telling you. But we'll get into that. But yeah, I want to encourage you to pray for spiritual reasons and not necessarily for the physical reasons because there's great physical benefits that come from it as well. But um, you can learn that in another YouTube video um, elsewhere. But um, yeah, I want to encourage you guys. We should do this for the Lord and we should do this to grow closer to the Lord, hear and understand more clearly what he's calling us to do and so forth. There's plenty of different reasons as to why you can and should fast spiritually. And I noticed this is a little tilted. There we go. That's a little better. Um, yeah. So anyway, we are now two days out of the fast and I got my phone here. I got some notes that I want to share with you guys just in regards to what I've learned and what I experienced. So I want to talk about prayer first because again prayer and fasting both of these two go hand in hand with one another you guys and i want to encourage you that it is so significant in the life of a believer prayer first you guys so when you're going into a fast i'm telling you make sure that you go into a fast knowing that you will be praying you will be praying during it and if you're not praying during a fast and you're just doing it just to not eat food or whatever you're not going to reap the benefits that you could have gotten it gotten from it um so i want to say that first and foremost and 
you should have a goal when you're fasting or you should have, you know, things in mind as to why you're fasting, meaning why am I go ask yourself, why am I going into the fast? What are the reasons? What are the things you may have things you're asking and desiring for from for excuse me, desiring for from the Lord. And it can be maybe you're praying for like a spouse. Maybe you're praying for a stronghold to be broken off your life. Maybe you're praying for a financial breakthrough. Maybe you're praying for, you know, a career, a job, whatever the case may be. There can be maybe you're praying to grow a deeper and stronger relationship with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit. Right. That was one of the things. And you can pray. You can go into a fast asking for and praying for multiple things, I learned. It doesn't necessarily just have to be one specific thing. It can be a number of things. And the Lord can provide answers and, um, you know, um, breakthroughs and many different things while you're fasting. So, anyway, so you should have a, a goal, right, and a reason as to why you're doing going to do the fast before you go into it. And then implementing prayer, knowing that you're going to implement prayer while you're fasting. And so prayer, I want to talk about prayer. It's interesting because prayer is something that basically every religion does, not just Christians. And I don't even like saying Christianity is necessarily a religion because I believe it's a relationship with the Lord, right? It's having a relationship is far more important, I believe, with Jesus than, you know, terming it as religion because I feel like the word religion can mess a lot of things up, right? And so anyway... So it's about having a relationship with the Lord. But anyway, all these other religions actually pray. Prayer is not a new thing. And a lot of religions actually, to be honest, pray more than Christians do. If we're really being real, they do. And some of them, you know, actually they require it in regards to like they need to implement it in their everyday lives and do it X amount of times per day and so forth. And, you know, they actually, a lot of other religions, a lot of other people pray more than Christians. That's the point I'm trying to get across, which is not a good thing. And I can understand why, because you guys, I, even myself, not going to lie, like I would dread even like thinking of the thought of praying because I didn't know um, necessarily how to pray. And I also didn't necessarily believe that it was going to even, anything was going to even happen, to be honest. And that's why a lot of people don't pray, why most people don't pray or when they pray, or they don't pray often, excuse me. So it's because they, one, don't know how to pray, and also because they don't believe that they're going to receive, they don't believe there's going to be any outcome from it, quite frankly. And that's why they don't pray. But I want to encourage you today. Prayer is so important, especially in the life of a believer, you guys. I can't stress it enough. We need to pray daily, continually. And there's plenty of things in Scripture that talk about prayer, right? And as to why we should do it. How Jesus implemented prayer all the time, you guys. And how, how seriously he took it. And, you guys, it's just so important. And praying is essentially just having a conversation with God. It's not anything too crazy. You don't have to memorize, you know, five paragraphs and then recite it every day. You know, it's a matter of literally having a conversation with God, a true, genuine, one-on-one -on -one conversation with the Lord, asking, maybe asking Him for things, giving Him gratitude. That's what I want to start with, giving Him gratitude, praising Him, thanking Him. Thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you for a breath in my lungs. Thank you for saving my life. Thank you for allowing me to become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And you guys, so anyway, there's plenty of things you can do with prayer. But prayer is essentially just having a conversation with God. And God desires that, you know, for you to spend time in prayer, for you to co commune with Him, for you to talk to Him. You guys, a relationship, any sort of relationship, whether any relationship, if you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, right, if you're married, you have to spend time with that individual. You have to commit your time, your energy, uh, your resources, right? Um, you have to really spend time with them, talk to them. And, you know, that's how a relationship works. And that's what the Lord wants with us. He doesn't want us to just, you know, come to him on Sundays and then go live, you know, sinfully and recklessly, um, you know, Monday through Saturday. No, it's literally every day we're supposed to be in a relationship with the Lord. And so prayer is so important, you guys. And I want to encourage you just to start implementing prayer more in your everyday life. Prayer is having a conversation with the Lord. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, yeah, 
So I want to encourage you with that. And a simple prayer, one of my favorite prayers and one of the best prayers I believe even cited in scripture, in my opinion, is the Our Father. We all, it's funny because I'm sure majority, if not all of us know it. And, you know, it literally wraps everything into that prayer. It talks about the fact that, you know, it says, give us our daily breath. Lord, help us this day. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive those who sin against who sin against us. And you guys, we actually need to forgive people who sin against us um, before we should even ask forgiveness of our own sins. Because if we don't forgive those who sin against us, then the Lord's not going to forgive us of our sins. And it talks about too, just leading us not into temptation and delivering us from evil. So it talks about a number of things all wrapped up in that one prayer. So you can recite that and literally just say that as well. But it, it, it's more than that. It's more than that. That's what I'm trying to get at. And it's so important, you guys. And I just want to encourage you to start praying more. There is real things that come from it. It's not just a waste of time. There, it, Literally, it's a matter of your faith as to why, you know, it's, it's a matter of your faith as to when, you know, things will come to pass in your life. And, yeah, literally great things will happen and your prayers will be answered and so forth and then it'll start becoming more of a real thing to you but like i said you don't need to like and you don't need to use like big words you don't need to like babble and it actually talks about this in scripture in matthew 6 7 through 8 and i'm reading out the niv version it says and when you pray do not keep babbling like pagans for they think they will be heard because of their many words do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him you guys, the Lord already knows what we need before we ask him. So don't even worry. But we need to ask him so we can give him basically kind of that, you know, that okay, that yes, we do want this and the Lord can provide in our life. And there's plenty of other things I can go down this road with with prayer. But the Lord already knows what we're going to ask him, what we desire, what we need. He already knows before we even ask it. So he just wants us to ask it and and so forth. But and you guys, prayer should not be an option in our life, but we should make it a priority. And Jesus actually called, God calls us to pray. He would use words in scripture like uh, when he would say, and when you pray, he would say, you know, words like that. And also in every situation with prayer and petition, ask and, and so forth. These are like just different things that the Lord would say in regards to the topic of prayer. So God encourages us to pray, and it's very important. It's very important. And Jesus would, you know, pray all the time, all the time. And Jesus actually did a 40-day fast. So if you think like a three-day fast, a five-day fast is crazy, think of Jesus. He did a 40-day fast in the desert. And you guys understand you're not going to die if you if you fast, right? Many people think, oh, I can't do that. I can't do like a uh, 24, 48 hour fast or, you know, five day fast, you know, I'm going to like pass out or whatever. You're going to, you're going to be okay. I'm telling you, I, I did it. I know many other people do it. I know people that do 21 day fast and they're fine. So don't worry. You'll be all right. But anyway, back to prayer. Why is praying important? If you have a pen and paper, I want to encourage you to write this down maybe, or if you have your phone, type it in your notes, because I'm going to give you 10 things as to why praying is important. You got you guys, one, God calls us to pray. Two, Jesus prioritized prayer, like we mentioned. Three, our Heavenly Father rewards us when we pray. Four, prayer strengthens us against temptation. Five, God uses our prayers to accomplish His will. Six, prayer is powerful and effective. Seven, prayer gives glory to God. Eight, prayer helps us receive and give forgiveness, which is a big thing. Nine, prayer reveals the sufficiency of God's grace. And 10, prayer keeps us thankful. You guys, these are, these are just to name a few. There's plenty of more that I can name, but that's just to name a few. And you guys, I'll put that on the screen. You guys can write it down or do whatever if you want to save that. But those will help, you, help to remind you as to why we pray, why it's important, just some reasons, right? And people don't pray, like I said, because they don't believe they're going to get results. You guys, it's a matter of praying and having faith. Faith is such a huge thing, especially in the life of a Christian, especially in the life of a believer. You guys, faith is something we all know is so crucial, so big, and something that we don't always wrap our minds around, but we need to understand it's such a, a critical component to, you know, the life of a believer. And, yeah, so many, yeah, in Scripture, too, when 
people were coming to get healed, Jesus would say, according to your faith and because of your faith, you know, let it be done done unto you. So it's a matter of your faith that you believe it can happen. And not only that it can happen, but it will happen because there's a difference. You can believe something can happen, but you may not believe it will happen for you in your life. So believe both things that God can make a breakthrough in your life. God can heal you, provide finances, provide that job, provide that relationship. He can, but you also need to believe that he will he will, he will, he will, if it's in accordance with his will, right? And, yeah, so I want to keep going. I got a couple more things. Um, and we must come humbly, you guys, and live in accordance with the word as well to expre expect our prayers to be answered. So that's another thing I want to talk about. We need to live in accordance with the word of God. Many people may not have their prayers answered because they're living just a completely sinful life. And then they ask God for this big lofty thing, and it doesn't may not come to pass. Well, yeah, well, maybe, and also because the Lord may not give what you're asking because he, know is, he knows what's best for us. He knows it's not going to benefit you or, you know, it's not going to be a good thing for you in the end. So he's actually can do it to protect us. He may not provide things that we pray for. Because like I said, if it's in accordance with his will, if it's, you know, if it's, uh, you know, pure, righteous, you know, it, it will come to pass if it's in accordance with his will and it's those things. But we need to be living in accordance with his word, right? Living in purity and righteousness and, you know, having a consistent prayer life and, yeah, having that faith as well. So there's a few components of it. And we should also come together and when we pray. This is another thing too. Not, it doesn't have to be all the time, right? You can go in your secret place, you know, where, you, where your father sees you in secret and pray there, right? And he will reward you openly. And, um, but we also, you know, the laying of hands with one another, with deliverance, you know, um, laying of hands with one another and, you know, just asking, confessing our sins to one another is another thing. That's another thing that we can do when we're praying. And, um, yeah. So anyway, there's more to that, but I want to say people need to also people come in agreement when people come in agreement with one another and lay hands on one another when they pray the lord can make a way the lord will make a way and you guys um yeah we need to come in agreement with each other and the lord will the lord will bless it you know again all of this is if it's in accordance with his will and his plan his purpose for your life and and so forth but yeah so you guys understand prayer is a huge thing uh, things can and will come to pass if you truly believe. If you have the faith, if you lack faith, then you may not receive it because you don't truly believe it will happen. And yeah, the Lord knows what's best for us. And yeah, I want to say this: one of my one of big influences in my one of the, uh, of the excuse me a large influence in my life uh, in regards to you know just living just learning about you know. Um, just learning about prayer and fasting and, you know, um, I would say just like a spiritual covering, you know, a great man of God is uh, one who I watch and listen to by the name of Dr. Miles Monroe. He has a big, uh, you know, ministry in the Bahamas. He actually has a big ministry in the Bahamas. He actually passed away a number of years ago um, in a plane crash. It was his own, his own plane. But um, the guy has such wisdom, bro such wisdom, such knowledge, true, just man of God. The guy would go on 21 day fast. That was actually the person I was talking about earlier. He would go on 21 day fast and he would call his whole church basically to do the 21 day fast. And he took it very seriously and saw the importance, saw the, rev the, you know, the relevance in it. And, you know, just knows that it's a great thing. And this guy, like he says, he said, he said this, he said, prayer is a partnership between man and the divine. Prayer is a partnership between man and the divine, you guys. And that was a quote by him. And I thought that was very powerful that I thought was worth sharing. And you guys, they also say too, all these, some, some of these big spiritual leaders or, you know, people big in the faith or generals of the faith that we would like to call them, you know, um, they all have one thing in common. And a lot of them talk about it, whether it be like, you know, like Catherine Kuhlman, this uh, Miles Monroe, Billy Graham, the list goes on, right? They all say, or at least I wouldn't say all of them, I can't speak for all of them, but a lot of them say 
they you have to pay the price there's a price that is paid to receive that like spiritual power to receive that you know um i guess that anointing in a way and yeah they all pay the price and one of the ways they pay the price is by fasting you know i don't i can't speak for all of them again but uh, a lot of them are fast they fast they pray and fast and, and when you pray and fast, it takes things to another level. That's what the whole point of the fasting is. And I want to get into fasting now. And I'll keep it kind of, you know, brief a little bit because I know we're going kind of long here. But I appreciate it. If you're still in the video and you like it or you learned anything, like, share, subscribe. Do all the things. Do all the things to get this message across the world. Across the world. I don't know. I get kind of weird when I'm on the camera. So forgive me for that. But here we go. So, yeah, prayer and fasting take things to another level. When you add that fasting implement to it, it takes things to another level. And what is fasting? If you got your pen and paper again, here are just some, you know, quick, uh, what are they? Um, cliff notes. Cliff notes. Cliff notes for you. Uh, what is fasting? The willingness Fasting is the willingness to put down fleshly desires for a spiritual purpose. Simple as that. Fasting is the willingness to put down fleshly desires for a spiritual purpose. That's kind of the definition I came up with, but I think it sounds pretty good. And that's kind of what it is, essentially, basically. And what are the benefits? What are some benefits of fasting? Well, one, I'll have the list again on the screen. Benefits of fasting helps you resist temptation, enhance prayer, it helps enhance your prayer life. Um, uh, it obtains spiritual knowledge and guidance. It helps you obtain spiritual knowledge and guidance. Uh, it helps and allows you to repent of your sins. It helps to increase sensitivity to the spirit. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. Um, and it helps experience deeper worship and praise, which is also a, a, big, a good thing and a big thing as well. And when we eat, and are so consumed by food physically and mentally, it can cause us to be clogged spiritually, actually. So that's another thing. That's why we need to drain ourselves physically, you know, of food. We desire it. It's a sacrifice, essentially, for us in a way. We're crucifying our flesh. We're turning down the things that we desire of the flesh and, you know, um, saying, you know, I'm willing to lay this down, Lord. Uh, because I want what you want for me and I want you. I desire you more than I desire the things of my flesh and the things of the world. So I'm willing to lay this thing down. And when we eat our, and are consumed by food um, physically, we're also consumed by it mentally as well and also spiritually. It can clog us spiritually. So that's why we fast. We try to eliminate that element so we can actually be cleared. And fasting allows us to have this drained and lets us hear and understand more clearly what the Lord is saying and calling us to do. And you guys, that's a huge thing. When we're fasting, we're ridding ourselves of food and we're basically allowing ourselves to be more um, attuned or in tuned, excuse me, to the Holy Spirit and hearing what he's calling us to do, what he wants us to do. And yeah, what we're supposed to do. It, he you hear his voice more clearly. I can't really explain it, but like, yeah, because every this is being drained out of you, essentially, like the food aspect, right? And you can hear his voice more clearly and, yeah, understand more so what he wants you to do as opposed to before where you're kind of clogged spiritually because you're so consumed physically, mentally with that food aspect, right? And, you guys, fasting changes you. Fasting changes you. When you pray during a fast, things you have been struggling with for years can all of the sudden break off. You guys, strongholds can break off. You, you can pray for a stronghold in a fast. Maybe something you've been struggling with for years, pornography. Um, maybe it's obesity. Maybe it's an addiction to, you know, um, to smoking, drugs, whatever the case may be. You can pray for it during a fast and ask the Lord to deliver you from this thing, this certain area, this certain thing in your life, and he can break it off your life just by you doing that fast. Something you've been bound to for years or struggling with for years, he, you can break it off in a fast. And um, when you pray during a fast, things you have been struggling with for years, yeah, all of a sudden can be broken off, like I said. So it's that's one of the great things that can come from fasting. And uh, 
Fasting makes intimacy with God a priority. That's another thing. When you fast, it makes your intimacy with God a priority rather than food. And when we're and when you're fasting, the time you spent eating food, instead replace that with reading the word, getting into the word of God. That's a big thing too. When you're fasting, pray and also be in the word. And that's another thing. When you're doing a fast, my camera just died. So I don't know if anything changed or shifted in regards to the view, but anyway we back baby the enemy tried to take us out we ain't doing it come on somebody lord always prevails in the end let's go baby so anyway but when you fast um when you fast make sure you're getting into the word spending a lot of time in the word of god is another big thing praying and spending a lot of time in the word of god and when you are fasting the time you use that you would normally eat food use that to read the word use that to spend time in prayer to worship Replace that time and implement it with that instead. And and then we're almost done here. I mean, because these are just kind of simple things I want you guys to know and I want to share with you what I've learned. And, um, yeah, I just want to end honestly with, um, you know, a time when, like I said, Jesus fasted. He fasted for 40 days, you guys. 40 days. I think, yeah, four, I don't know if it's 40 days and 40 nights. I don't know. Don't quote me. I need to look back at the scripture. I should have looked at it before. But I know it was a minimum of 40 days. And it's so insane. It's so insane. And it's so crazy. I love it. And um, I want to talk about, so he fasted, right? And he implemented it in his life. So that must mean it's important and significant and it's for some purpose, right? But he also talks about, um, there's a story um, I remember in Matthew, or excuse me, it was in Luke. Yeah, it was in Luke. Where... The Pharisees and the religious teachers came up to Jesus and, um, and it was Jesus and his disciples and he came up, they came up to Jesus and asked, Jesus, why don't you, why don't your disciples fast? We like essentially saying like they, they fast, but your disciples don't. And Jesus responded, well, they don't need, basically, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, of course, responded, they didn't need to fast because the bridegroom was already with them. But you guys, when the bridegroom is not with them or not with us, right, then we need to fast. So that was the reason why. Because the, he was the bridegroom. He was already there with them. So they, his the disciples didn't need to fast. But now that he is away, we need to fast. And he actually says, it actually talks about this in Luke 5.35. It says, but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them in those in those days they will fast i'll say that again because i read that bad but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them in those days they will fast and those days are now you guys so we need to fast we need to implement fasting in our life and i'm telling you i received so much breakthrough i received a financial breakthrough um, literally the day I broke my fast, which is insane. Literally just things came out of nowhere and opportunities and just blessings came out of nowhere. So it was such a, a blessing. And I know there's more things, there's more things that are going to come from the things that I prayed for in my fast. Cause I believe it to be so, and I believe the word of God to be true and it to come forth and it'll come forth in the Lord's perfect timing. And I believe that things are coming to pass. I already see them coming to pass. And I believe that the Lord is going to provide and, um, anticipated and excited. So yeah, but if, it's kind of like a newish type video. I'm gonna I'm gonna start making more of these um, because I don't know. It's just important. We need to preach the gospel, you guys. We need to try to make disciples of all nations, you guys. We are living in the end days, and I'm telling you, the final days. And I'm telling you, we need to win souls for the kingdom, baby. That's what it's all about. So if you guys like the video, I encourage you to, again, like, share, comment, subscribe. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Comment. Let me know. Let me know if you learned anything, any encouragement, or you want me to talk about anything. Um, again, I'm not an expert by any means, but i just here to boast in the Lord, here to sh share what I know, and, you know, just try to be a disciple and ambassador of Christ. So if this is your first time even kind of considering Jesus or considering, you know, this whole topic we talked about fasting, or you want to know Jesus more in this whole Christian life, and you want to accept him into your life, then I want to end with a salvation prayer, honestly, because that's literally what's all about, you guys. That's why we're here. And 
You guys, if you want to accept Christ into your life, I want to encourage you today. It's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. Your life will turn 180. You'll be headed in a great new direction. You'll gain salvation. You'll be filled with peace, joy, love, just assurance, comfort, and fulfillment, and so much more. And I'm telling you guys, it's the best decision you'll make in your life. And that's you today. I want to encourage you. Repeat this prayer after me. Just repeat it after me. It's nothing crazy. And just close your eyes as well. Eliminate all distractions and repeat this after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and as my Savior. Jesus Christ, I accept you, I believe in you, and I want you. Amen. Amen. Well, congratulations. Welcome to the family, baby! We're glad to have you, and I'm excited for you. I'm knowing and assured that the Lord is going to bless you. He is going to do great things in your life, and He's going to do that because He loves and He cares for you, and He's a provider, and He's a protector, and so many other things, but your life's going to be forever changed for the better, and I'm proud of you, and I and I love you. So, you guys, this is the end of the video, but I hope you enjoyed, and yeah, I will see you in the next one, and let's go.